Sound travels in waves, which are created by vibration. A guitar string is plucked, vibrates, and causes the air molecules around it to vibrate as well. These eventually reach our eardrums, which also vibrate, and then the brain does some very clever stuff and interprets these vibrations into what we perceive as sound. They travel much the same way as waves do through water, drop a pebble into a pond and watch the ripples spread out, make a noise, and something similar happens to the molecules in the air. We can simplify this by using what's called an XY graph to show the properties of a sound wave. Here's an illustration of a simple sine wave drawn on an XY graph. The image shows us a smooth, continuous wave that gives us an accurate visual representation of the sound it is describing. Note that the waveform starts at zero and ends its complete cycle back at zero. Here's a quick example of a sine wave. Of course, sound is much more complex than that, and as a result of sound being made up of many different frequencies at different strengths, we end up with a much more complex overall waveform. And don't be fooled into thinking of sound as linear. It actually travels in an ever-expanding sphere from its source, and we use the graph as a simplified way of looking at its shape and seeing what properties it has. The graph also tells us where the wave is strongest and weakest. At its peak, the air pressure is increased and the molecules in the air are squashed together. The opposite is true when the wave hits the low point. Here we can see these high pressure and low pressure bands of molecules travelling through the air. But note that the vibration is being passed through the air to adjacent molecules, who pass them on in turn, and so on until it reaches our ears. It's rather like a Mexican wave, and our eardrum resonates when the vibrations are passed along to it. And because it depends on the squashing and thinning of molecules to transmit the vibrations, it's called a compression wave. As the sound moves from high to low amplitude, the higher volume and therefore higher energy bands in the sound wave compress the molecules, which in turn move out and compress their neighbours, swiftly followed by the low energy bands where the molecules are thinned. Again, think of the pebble dropped into the pond and the ripple spreading out from it. These ripples are a direct representation of the energy caused by the pebble hitting the water. And much the same thing is happening with the water molecules. The peaks of the waves are the high energy and the low areas, well, you get it. <laughs>